Hi there guys, it's me Owen from Essex Walking Britain and today we're going to be doing another short segment video about our walk through the Nar Valley. Now we're actually going to be talking about the bone mill that I found just outside of Narbra. I wasn't expecting to find it, it was a bit of a surprise to me. So uh, it's quite an interesting and unique video segment, certainly not something that I've ever really done before. Um, so we're going to have a little look at this video of when I actually found it. You'll be able to see some real time reactions and then uh, we'll actually describe a little bit about it in a bit. So guys, that was quite a long walk, wasn't it? I'm now at a little village called Narbra, and uh, I've actually just been through to Narbra Hall. Now I met the man who owns the uh, estate, and he was very busy working in his garden, and I didn't really want to disturb him. But um, I did a little bit of research online, and it turns out there's actually another Narbra in the UK and another Narbra Hall. So I, I went up to him and I spoke to him and I said, uh, can I have a look around? I understand this place is like a, a gift shop. And uh, I'd completely gotten the wrong Narbra Hall. So uh, anyway, I, I apologize to the man. It was his sort of private home, <laughs> but he was kind enough to let me have a little walk around the grounds and have a look at the little Iron Age uh, settlement and fort that, that was there. So um, I had a, had a little wander around and saw the fort and it, to be fair it was quite impressive. I, uh, it, it, it was in very very good condition and I imagine that's because it's on a private residence so um, you know, it, it wouldn't really get spoiled or bothered. So it's sort of preserved that way I guess but um, the man was very very kind. And just out of respect to him, I didn't film any of his home or anything like that. But um, yeah, nice little adventure that. It's a little bit windy, so I'm trying to sort of make sure that it's as uh, easy for you people watching to listen to what I'm saying. Uh, I apologise if you can't. But uh, Narborough itself actually means... Uh, the river for a narrow place and obviously the river that we're walking along now is the river Nar, and that's where it gets its name from now uh, there used to actually be another RAF station in the area and it was called RAF Narbra now it didn't survive the first world war it made its way all the way up to armistice and then it was deemed that it was no longer necessary and it was closed. But it was actually only a mile and a half from RAF Marham. So these two stations were very close to each other. Now you have to imagine at the time Marham was much, much smaller than it is today. Uh, so much so to the extent that Narbra was actually the largest station of its time. Now, I've been to Stomari's in Essex and I suspect it would be quite similar to that um, but Stomari's is fantastic it's all perfectly preserved and uh, you can have a look around it and they do little fly-ins with old uh, first world war aircraft there sorry the wind is quite loud um, get a little bit of cover here hopefully from these trees but um, I'm actually hoping at some point to go down there and do a little walk around Stomari's and show you all that, that's down there because it's quite impressive really um but yeah RAF Narbra I went and had a look in the little church here and there was a lovely little memorial for it it was interesting seeing the uh the ranks being all Royal Flying Corps and there's actually a nice little story about it at the end of the First World War on Armistice the pilots from Marham flew over with bags of flour and to celebrate they actually dropped two bags of flour onto Marham dropping it everywhere made a awful mess funny little practical joke so Narborough turned around and said you know what we're gonna retaliate 
and they actually did. They went back with some bags of soot and bombed Marum with the bags of soot. Funny little story that. So, uh, after such a long and horrible war, it must have been just quite nice to be able to to celebrate and have a little bit of banter. Um, wow, I've just come across, this is a complete surprise to me, I've come up across an old uh, mill. So it looks like there's some milling stones over there, a nice big wheel and a bench. Fantastic. Could have sat there and done this. Never mind. I suppose we can take a little seat for a minute or two. Anyway, that's not the uh, only history of Narborough. I'll just show you it here, look. It's amazing. That's not the uh, only history of Narborough, anyway. There was a... Uh... Oh, blimey, that's a bit... Ooh, thought it was going to fall through that for a minute there. Um, there's a little bit more history. The railway, which is actually slightly further back, back that way, uh, uh, I went for it earlier, is um, part of the old Narborough line that went from King's Lynn all of the way down to Swatham. Now, uh, it was closed down in the beaching cuts, something that we've talked quite a lot about in our other videos. Uh, the Colne, uh, the Colne Estuary one is quite a good one where we did a section along the old Brightling Sea branch line. Um, but uh, yeah, we, we walked under, uh, under the old railway bridge back there. And then um, slightly north of that, if you follow the line up, the old railway line, there's uh, an old station for Narborough and it's actually been converted into someone's private home but the platform's still there, it's all preserved and also the little uh, roof that was over the top of the platform to stop all the passengers from getting wet, that's all still there, perfectly preserved as well. Anyway, I've had a little bite to eat, if only I'd known this place was up ahead, that would have been pretty cool. Um, but uh, I'm gonna head on, maybe even find out a little bit about this um, this mill which I've just stumbled across. Our next stop is Pentney which is slightly west, slightly north. We'll head back to the crossroads which we came across earlier, head north from there. But um, that's it from me for now. I'll see you when we get to Pentney. So now that you've actually seen me finding the bone mill and had a little look at it from the video, um, it's quite an interesting little find. As I said earlier I wasn't really expecting to find it and um, I didn't see it on any maps along the river and a bone mill surely isn't something I've ever come across before and I'm sure it's something you've never really heard of either so hopefully I'm going to be able to describe a little bit about what a bone mill is and the history of this one in particular. Now there used to be quite a few bone mills around Norfolk but this one at Narborough in particular is in incredible condition. The actual wheel itself was restored to a condition in 2015 where it could actually turn under the water flow of the River Nar. There's no bone mill left in existence that can do that. So that's quite an impressive thing. When it was in operation from the early 1800s to about 1884, uh, what happened was all the bones from the dead human bodies, from dead animal bodies, and more particularly from the whaling industry were brought to this location, usually by barge, which was pulled by horses along the River Nar, and then it was ground up into fine little dust that was then put over all the crops in the area and turned into fertilizer. So that allowed the local agriculture to have a higher yield of their output, which fed more people. The flow of the river turns the wheel, which then turns the grindstones that turn the bone to dust. This is similar to what they did in the wheat industry, where they would take the wheat from the local fields, use the local tides, say for example, what happens in Alsford in Essex. The tide comes in, which then turns the wheel, which then turns the grindstone, which then grinds up all of the grain, all of the wheat, and turns it into flour, which is then shipped off to make bread. Now, in the 1880s, they had slightly different um, moral outlooks than we do now. So how they actually sourced quite a lot of their bones was by taking the remains of bodies from North Germany, importing them to the UK, 
specifically Narborough, and then grinding them up and then spraying the remains as dust over all the local fields. Now, the same happened with the bones from the whales. So the whaling industry was quite big then. Um, we didn't realize at the time what an effect we were having on the marine habitat and the environment. Um, so whaling was quite large at the time. And what they would do is at Kings Lynn, where they would get all of the whale blubber, the entire whale and remove the blubber. Um, the actual bones themselves were then brought down the river Nar by barge and then ground up in this mill. Now hopefully you've seen a few pictures there of what the mill looked like. There are very few pictures actually of what the mill looked like before the 1970s. Um, obviously after its use it was abandoned in about 1884 and it was left there to sort of dilapidate and, and fall to pieces but due to the National um, the national Lottery and the, their Heritage Trust, they've managed to actually get it back up to a good state as to what it would have looked like at the time, certainly the wheel. And I was actually really surprised when I found it as to what a good condition it was in. It's not usually something you find on a walk. Um, to see that it, it wasn't really advertised in Narborough and to just stumble across it, seeing you know, quite a substantial amount of money has been put into it was, was quite pleasing actually. So uh, hopefully you've learned a little bit about the bone mill or hopefully you've learned what a bone mill is in particular. I certainly didn't know anything about a bone mill until stumbling across it and hopefully you've enjoyed gaining that knowledge during this video. Now it's my hope that over the coming walks, we've got some quite interesting ones coming up certainly in the area, that um, we'll be able to do more of these short segment videos to hopefully try and encourage people to watch the full video. So if you haven't watched the Nar Valley walk, please, I'll leave a link, maybe even just up here on a card so that you can go and watch it. It was quite an interesting walk, some great scenes, some great views, specifically as the sun was setting over at Pentney the, near the Priory. Uh, it's really quite a lovely spot and I, don't, I wouldn't want you to miss it. Um, that about does it for our coverage of the Nar Valley. Um, and uh, I'm gonna go away, do some planning for the next walk and hopefully come up with a great new video for you guys in the local Norfolk area. So until next time, I've been Owen from Essex Walking Britain and I'll see you in the next video. Hi guys, it's me, Owen again. Um, just about to pop up on the screen are going to be a few videos, uh, some recommended by YouTube, some by myself, and some which are going to be links to playlists of other videos like this as well. So if you enjoyed today's video, you might enjoy those ones. Please go and have a look. If not, I'll see you in the next video.